Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and this is set number 71747, The Keeper's Village from the LEGO Ninjago theme. This set contains 632 pieces, 5 minifigures, and will retail for $49.99 in the US. This is an all new set coming in March 2021 and was sent to me early by the LEGO group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Before I get started, I'd just like to ask you guys to please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm doing early reviews of all 5 of the March 2021 Ninjago sets, as well as some other really cool stuff coming soon, but with all that out of the way, let's get on to the review. So, to start, here is the main build of The Keeper's Village. There is no side builds or anything in this set which I find a little interesting because most sets nowadays do have some sort of side build. However this does separate into multiple parts so we take a look at each of those individually. The first main bit of separation is this like entire main area right here is disconnected from this build right here. They're connected together with a little clip in the middle right there which works to keep these parts together like when on display but it makes it also very easy to separate them so let's just separate them right now. And you can see these two parts come apart just like that. So here's that right side of the build, and it's like this wilderness area. This is personally my favorite part of the build. I just find it really visually interesting. We don't get like large, like just terrain, but like pure terrain builds that don't have any structures at all. Just like natural terrain like this, we rarely get in Lego sets. And this looks really nice, and I would love if we got like more of this. There's quite a few fun play features here too, which I believe are meant to represent like little traps that the keepers set for the ninja. Or maybe just like traps created by the natural wilderness. To start, here's the only one that's really just like pure imagination. There's no like play feature to this, it's just a cool like design. There's this little pit with these teeth coming out, and you can imagine this being something similar to like the Sarlacc pit from uh, Star Wars Episode 6, with like these teeth coming out that eat up like anything that comes above it. I like the design of this though, having these teeth pieces in these like rounded 1x2s creates like this different texture that shows like hey this is a trap that should be avoided but still blends in with the rest of the environment really well. Next around the side you can see this little stickered sign piece right here. It's covered by a bit of foliage right here but you can move it back and forth to make it a little more visible. It's the same like creature design that's present on a lot of the different builds. I believe it's just a front facing version of the creature you see on the shields or on the like front sails of the catamaran. At the time of me recording this season 14 hasn't aired so I'm not sure who this creature is but it's definitely interesting and definitely like ties into the keeper's story in some way. Behind it there's another piece of foliage which is on this little like wooden bar piece and this piece is like really easy to rotate, it's like meant to spin. So if you want you could have it up like this to somewhat cover this little trap right here though it doesn't do much to do so because there's this like giant skull sticker right here. Speaking of the skull sticker this is another play feature right here. I think the skull is meant to represent just like hey don't step on this. Because the idea is if a character steps on it right here you push back right here and it flings the character off. Let me see if I can do it a little bit better. It flings them off just like this. Okay, so yeah, you can have them fly in the air a little bit. It doesn't always work the best, and they seem to just sort of land where they fly, but it's just a play feature to just, like, trip the characters up and get in their way. Not my favorite of this set, but it's alright. One I really like, though, is this tree right here with this little chain dangling from it. So the idea behind this one is you have the tree down like this, and you see these little bits of foliage right here, and then there's just, like, a little bar. You're supposed to connect the chain piece and that foliage piece on top of that bar right there, so it just looks like a couple leaves on the ground. And then you would have one of the ninja come along and step on it. And when they do, you push back right here... And they fly up into the air. I don't believe they're supposed to fly like that. I think they're supposed to stay connected. <laughs> so maybe I hit it too hard. Let's try that again. There you go. That's how it's supposed to go. The ninja steps in the leaves. It triggers a trap. And then they're flung into the air. And this can like dangle them above this little tooth pit right here like you saw. So you can incorporate that with a play feature or without it. It works either way. Other than that, there's not a ton more going on here. You get a little skull piece right here, which is cool. Lots of pieces of foliage, which I do appreciate. I like the rock terraforming all throughout. It feels just like very natural and random. I think it's a good representation of how just like this rough island would look. I also like this tiny little bit of a beach area right here with a red crab. He's a cool piece to get. And I like this little bit of sand in the blue water. They're just nice colors to be included here. And then finally, this piece right here is a little tile shooter. If you guys have never seen these before, you push back on this like little uh, Technic pin right here. And it shoots out one by one rounded tiles just like that. Oh, I don't know if you could see that. I could try to slow-mo that. Here are the little tiles that came out, they're just trans purple one by one tiles. Trans purple is like the main color of the keeper's weapon, so it makes sense that they'd be using them here. Personally, I don't care too much for like the stud shooters, the spring load shooters, or the tile shooters like this, but I think I would have had fun with them as a kid, it's just as an older collector now, they're just not my thing. Moving on, here's like the more inhabited part of the village. This part of the set reminds me a lot of the Journey to the Skull Dungeons from the last wave of Ninjago Master of the Mountain. It's got a lot of similar colors, a lot of similar like design techniques. It's got the gray, it's got the lava, it's got the stairs up the sides. This is a little bit bigger and it's obviously meant to represent a different thing like this is meant to be like the keeper's main throne it's got like this dragon face right here however it is very similar to that set but that's not inherently a bad thing because i really like that set there's a couple cool accessories out the front to give the minifigures to hold you got the staff right here which has one of the keeper's shields on it this shield does come in other sets but it's still cool it's included here the shield and staff are just attached with two clips and can be removed very easily and then you can remove the shield from the staff 
And there's a look at the shield without the staff. I really like the printing on this. The blue and the yellow are such a cool calling combination. And there's that creature I mentioned before that's present in a lot of the Keeper's aesthetic. There's also a white spear weapon attached to the clip that can easily be removed. In terms of terrain, this is probably the coolest part of the build. You have like this giant snake or dragon head right here. I like how they incorporate all these like little lava and fire bits into its design to give it some color. Because the teeth are orange, the eyes are orange, and then like this mouth right here is orange. I like this lava dripping on the side. They use like the superhero's power blast here in trans orange. That's not a super common piece. I believe this is our first time getting it in a mainline Ninjago set in this color. I think we got it in blue in the Ninjago City Gardens, but it's not very common. So it's cool to see that used outside of superheroes. You can see the upper area of this right here has this little torch area with some fire burning. This uses the like more modern Harry Potter candle fire piece, which again isn't a piece I've seen used in Ninjago before. So it's cool to see them like branching out into pieces from other themes. And it works quite effectively here. I think that I think this fits the little torch right here much better than using like the larger classic fire pieces. And then to show off another transformation feature of this set, this entire area can open up. It doesn't detach like the other area we just showed, but it can open up to give you access into the interiors of both of these two sections. So you open it up just like this. You can see on the left side there's this little like, bone cage, and on the right side there's this little area to cook food. The inside of this side is fairly simple, you just have this little campfire right here, and on top of it there's this little bowl. The campfire just uses like the classic smaller fire piece, and it's got some stones around it. Fairly simple, but it does look good. There's also an ore on the wall on the inside here if you want to use that as an accessory for one of the minifigures. Looking at the bowl itself, there's some pretty cool parts inside of it. Pouring it out, you can see there's two parts of the carrot, the uh, stem to the carrot, and then the carrot itself. There's also a little blue fish piece right here. And then there's four blue studs to represent the water that's cooking in. Moving on to the other side, there's this little cage right here. It opens up just like this. Not a ton going on here. It's actually quite small and cramped. There's a little jumper plate to stand a minifigure on, a little bucket in the back, and a bone. So if someone is in prison here, they at least have some amenities. <laughs> and then the wall, there's this little green leaf piece and this technic piece. Which, if you push down the leaf like this, it raises the mouth of the structure in the front and allows you to access the prison cell from the inside. So if you want to imagine that minifigure is like breaking the uh, pr imprisoned minifigure out of here, you can push down this and this is how they could escape. Moving over to the stairs, you can see there's some foliage on it, which I appreciate because it gives a little bit of texture to it. Moving up to the top, you can see there's another staff piece on a clip right here. This is the same exact one that was holding the shield, but obviously this time without the shield. And next to it is Chief Mammatus' throne. I don't dislike the throne, I just feel like it feels maybe a little small for Chief Mammatus. It's not a huge deal though, and obviously it can very easily be customized to be a bit bigger. And then finally we have this giant totem guy right here. This guy is really cool and one of the best parts of this set. There is some posability with him, you can actually change how he's oriented. You can rock him from side to side, so if you want to be leaning towards Chief Mammatus you can, if you want to be leaning away you can, or you can have him just poke you straight up, though when he's like this he is quite easy to just knock over accidentally. There's three distinct sections of this guy, the brown section, the yellow section, and the red section. They each have their own like little posable arms and weapons that they're holding. They come with the weapons like parts pack in white and I believe this is the only set to come with it in that color. Which is really cool and they look great in this color. They look like the weapons made out of bone. But you can see this bottom guy has knives, this guy has katanas, and this guy has these larger blades like Lloyd's Prime Empire weapon. And in the very top there's the amulet on top of the red one's head. This entire totem can also just be removed. And once on the ground you can take it apart even further. Each of these individual sections come off, they're their own individual creatures. So as you can see here's the red one right here, here's the yellow one, and here's the brown one. Going from bottom to top, we'll start with the brown one right here. I really like this guy, he seems to be like the friendliest of the three. He's got these big bright eyes, his teeth like aren't pointed out, they're just like in his mouth. He's got these samurai horns in white, and I really like the uh, knife pieces in white. I think they're one of the coolest ones in the weapon pack. His face is stickered as with the rest of these. I really wish these were printed. It always rubs in the wrong way when a character has a stickered piece on it instead of a printed piece. And based on what we've seen in the trailer, these guys are a character, not just a totem, so I do really wish this was printed, but, but the sticker works, so I'm not going to complain too much, and I like the look of this guy. Moving up, here's the yellow one, again, same samurai horn, but he has the uh, katana pieces in white instead. He's got these small teeth pieces coming out the front to give him like little tusks. And his entire face just looks a little more angry and annoyed. This is probably my favorite in terms of colors. I like this bright orange for him. It combines really well with the blue and I like the dark orange on his face too. Nothing going on in his back, but he's got the movable arms just like the other two. And then finally, here's the red one. This is definitely the one with the most uniqueness in him. First at the back, you can see that there's these like trans purple lightning pieces coming out. When he's built up as the totem, you can have those pointing down. But when you have him like out just on his own, you can probably put them up. Speaking of the amulet, that's just attached with the clip, it can very easily be removed, so if you just want to use this as a collectible and not a part of this guy, you can. Instead of having just like the standard samurai horn pieces, he uses like the scythe pieces in white to create like larger samurai horns, and then he uses the bigger blades. While the orange one's my favorite, this is probably the best looking one objectively because he only has two colors, all of them have a red on the top of their head, but this guy's main color is wet red, so it fits them all a lot better. And it's got these two big teeth pointing out, and a really nice like stickered face. I'm a fan of this guy, I think he's a ton of fun, and I like how all three of these combine as a whole. Moving on, here are the first three minifigures included in this set. We have the Island variants of Kai, Cole, and Jay. Island Call at the moment is exclusive to this set, and this is the cheapest way to get both Kai and Jay. So this set will likely be the way most people get these figures. And I have to say, all three of these island suits look really good. I'm a really big fan of the overall design of the island suits, I just think they're a ton of fun. 
and they're very unique compared to other ninja suits while still looking like ninja suits, which I really appreciate because because while I love Prime Empire and Master of the Mountain, they didn't really feel like ninja suits, which it was cool to see them deviate, but it's cool to see them get back to the roots here because these look like ninja. And it's an all new look for them, and I absolutely adore that. Kai's probably my least favorite of the six, but that doesn't make him bad at all. I especially like this like gold trim around him, but other than that, he just doesn't really do it for me. The dark red in the arms is cool, but I wish it was incorporated more into the torso, just the bright red is a little too striking for me. Comparing him with something like Jay, you can see Jay uses a lot of dark blue all throughout. So the overabundance of bright red on Kai for me just sort of takes me out of it a little bit. But that doesn't make him bad by any means. I actually really like the suit for him. He's just my least favorite of the six. Cole, I really like. This guy is awesome. It reminds me somewhat of his Prime Empire suit, but on a, like an actual ninja suit instead of his Prime Empire getup. And this is far more detailed from the Prime Empire suit, which I think is awesome. One thing I love about this guy is the subtle scratch marks all over his torso. It may be hard to see on the camera, but he has like these metallic scratch marks like all over this armored piece. And it makes the suit look really like rugged and beat up and it looks like he's wearing it like on this island expedition where like he doesn't have the chance to like go back and like f fix any blemishes or anything. And that carries on the rest of the design. I like this sort of like greenish yellowish color. It's similar to the one on Lloyd and I think that fits Cole quite well. I like the bright orange of the bell. It's just like the perfect touch of color. The gold on the symbol, but the symbol is like a little scratched out. It reminds me a little bit of the Lego Movie 2 figures where they made it look like their printing was rubbed off a little bit. And I think that fits really well in making like a somewhat battle damage suit. Cole uses his like Ninjago Movie headband piece, but with an orange headband instead of brown. And the bright orange headband looks excellent. It fits Cole really well and it shows that this is like, hey, this is TV show Cole, not movie Cole. And then Jay's probably my favorite of the six. I just love the color combination here. Jay suits I've never really used yellow before. The only one I can think of is like season 11 Jay. He had the two pins, but that wasn't a lot of yellow. This guy has yellow all throughout though, in his torso and his legs. And it's just like a subtle little touch, but, but it just gives me the feeling of like lightning and electricity. And it fits Jay really well. And it's a nice like burst of color to match like the dark blue all throughout. I also like the blue headband on him. I think it fits Jay's hairstyle really well. So this is probably my favorite one. Oh, and real quick to mention weapons, they all come with different variants of this golden machete piece. Kai just comes with two of the actual machete itself to, like, replace his two standard katanas that he usually has. Cole comes with the machete sort of turned into a scythe. This works alright, I guess. It feels a little bit awkward, but I think it works better than I would have expected it to. I just think it's weird that they all have to use this machete piece except for Zane. I think they would have been better off just giving him a proper scythe, but this is okay, and it is a unique weapon. And then Jay has the machete on the chain. This isn't a bad idea, but he actually can't hold the other end of the chain at all, which is why I have it dangling. And I I think that's the biggest flaw. I wish there was some way for him to like hold the machete up when he wasn't using it. But if you're just imagining him like swinging around to attack enemies, it does work. Here they all are with their hoods and accessories removed so you can better look at their face and torso prints. Same standard face that they've had since the movie for all of them, nothing new there. I think just exposing Jay's entire torso print makes it look even better. Like I generally love how this figure looks so much. And then turning them around, there's their alternate faces and back torso prints. Kai's, I've got the same issues with the back as I have with the front. It looks good, I just feel like the red's a little overbearing though, I do like the symbol in the middle. Cole's looks really like rugged and realistic if that makes any sense. He also has like those metallic like shines in his uh, armor again. I'm actually a huge fan of that one. Cole might be my second favorite of these. I actually really like how this figure looks the more I look at it. And then Jay has that like yellow and blue and dark blue combination again. It looks absolutely perfect. I'm such a big fan of this figure and I hope they continue to use yellow for him because it looks so great on him. And then moving on, here are the two villain figures in the set. We have Thunderkeeper and Chief Mammatus. You can see that Chief Mammoth just has like this giant elaborate staff right here with this purple lightning bolt coming out. I think this looks really cool and although it's a bit big, <laughs> I think it fits this character really well in the whole like lightning aesthetic that they have going on. Removing that though so we can see these guys a little closer up. Thunderkeeper looks quite similar to the shield we saw earlier in the review. It's got the same exact color scheme though he's got this like really cool looking face on it instead of that like creature design. I really like how the teeth are done here. They're very like sharp and scary. And I like the splotchiness and unevenness of it all. It really feels like it was painted by the Keepers themselves. It doesn't feel like a flat toy. And I appreciate that. It's just a nice sense of realism. Mammatus' headdress is really cool too. I like the dual molding in this blue color and with the gold. He's got these like two white teeth pieces coming out and he's got this like golden armor on his torso and legs. You can see on his belt and his torso there's that like creature design that we saw in the shield. This creature clearly has like a lot to do with the Keeper, so I'm curious like what its context is in the show, but we don't know yet at the time of me filming this, so. It's definitely cool looking, I'm just curious to see like what comes of it. He also has a dark orange cape, which I found quite cool. I thought it was red from the pictures we saw of it, but no, it's dark orange, which is a color I've never gotten this cape in before. And I'm always a fan of getting things in new colors, and it definitely makes this guy feel a lot more special. There's a look at these face prints with everything removed, as well as Thunderkeeper's torso print. Thunderkeeper has like this big smiling face with like these white markings all around his face and these bright yellow eyes. Mammoth just has the same like bright orange eyes, but he has 
has these golden markings around him instead of the white. Which I'm not sure if you can see them, they're printed metallically and they look quite good. And then he's got this like open mouth with a smile and he's got these huge tusks coming out and he has one golden tooth. He's just a really fun villain design. Turning these two around, you can see the back torso print on Thunderkeeper. He has like these little lightning effects on the back of his armor. And then he's got this white printing on the back of his head to match the white printing on the front. Mavis' alternate face is quite similar to the front of his face though. It's as smiling, he's like more angry now, but he's got those same golden markings. And if we flip the cape up, we get to the back torso print. You can see he has those little gemstones all throughout and a couple like little lightning markings. His armor just feels like a more elegant and upgraded version of this armor, which is just a cool sense of consistency. So all in all, I really like these guys. But as a whole, would I recommend this set? I think I would, yeah. When this wave was first revealed, I expected this to be my favorite set, and hey, there's a lot to like here. But the Jungle Dragon just went too above and beyond for me to not call that one my favorite. However, that set being really good does not take away from this being a good set. My main issue with this set isn't really the fault of the set itself, I just wish we had more of it. I love the big terrain builds, and last year's Skull Sorcerer's Dungeons was like one of the coolest things. So this set only being like half the size of that was a bit of a letdown, but also it's half the size and also half the price, so for the price, this is a great set. My favorite part is probably the wilderness area on the side, I really like all the different traps, especially like the little tree with the leaf that like flings the ninja up, that one's so cool. The creature design of the rock's really nice, and I like the uh, giant totem pole. It just feels like there's a lot of really cool ideas here and it just could be more. But as a whole, it is still a really nice looking set, I just wish it was bigger. In terms of minifigure selection, this is one of the best sets. Cole is obviously exclusive and this is the cheapest way to get Mammatus, Kai, and Jay. So if you're not planning on getting the Catamaran Sea Battle, which I know a lot of people aren't, this is a great set to get. Plus, this is the only set to come with those totem guys, and I'm not sure how important they're going to be on the show, but I know they're at least going to have a part, so that's at least something. So as a whole, yeah, I would recommend this set. I don't, like, absolutely adore it as much as I expected to, but I still really like it, and I think it's a quite well done set. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As I said at the beginning of this video, if you could please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm doing reviews of all five of the new Ninjago March 2021 sets, as well as something else really cool coming in a couple of of days so by liking and subscribing you help support the channel and you'll see those videos as soon as they come out but i think it's about all i got to say for this video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye